Hi everyone, it's Jaakko here. Now that Zebras 4 R8 is coming and we are pretty excited about uh, having the ability to use vector displacement maps and also the 3D alphas, uh, I'd like to take a look at uh, how we can use 2D alphas to save time in our modeling process. So this is uh, all uh, pretty old stuff by now and, and you know, uh, uh, pretty much uh, this has been covered in many tutorials, but uh, I'd like to give my take on this and how I use alphas in my sculpting process. So uh, I've created actually a bunch of things here. Um, I um, can see that, uh, well, I've got this latch thing in here. This is the one which I created for meter create project uh, back in the day. And I just uh, wanted to, to make alpha of this because this is some, something that I need pretty often and it's good to have it. So what I'm gonna do is just gonna drag it here. So, so when you create your own alphas, um, sometimes this happens. And what this is that basically, you need to adjust your mid value in here. So I have my alpha palette uh, uh, talked in here and what I'm gonna do is just uh, drop the mid value to zero because we can see that there's not really this, uh, the background is completely empty. So it only has the alpha which is sort of popping out in here. So I'm gonna um, cancel this, I'm gonna drag it here. So um, if you are doing models for, for game or if you are making your high poly to to basically to be baked down into uh, the model to, which has uh, normal maps uh, which is going to be using game engine you can really use this i don't think that it it makes any difference whether it's a real 3d or not because when you take a look at this we can see that it's not really 3d it is just um, a shape which is uh, coming out from the surface because what alpha is is just height information it's not um, anyhow real three-dimensional but but the normal maps, for example, they don't take account what is really 3D or not. They don't really understand even the real height of the displacement. So it really won't matter. And, and it, if it saves you time, then by all means use 2D alphas, I would say. Um, so um, what I also have here is that I've done some uh, some of these kind of pipe works, uh, which could be used, uh, which have been nice to use for some mechanical things, objects like that. And, and yes, um, so how can we create our own alphas? Well, it's pretty easy. I have my bullet hole uh, model, which I just sculpted. It's pretty simple uh, basic sculpture in here. And, and I like to take this and convert this into uh, 2D alpha so we can use this to create bullet holes in our models. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to document and I'm gonna go resize our uh, document here. I'm gonna make a square document. I'm gonna maybe like call like 2024 here. Uh, Gonna make that and I'm gonna hit resize. I'm gonna hit yes to this. And I'm gonna clear our canvas by hitting Ctrl N. I'm gonna drag our model again to the canvas and maybe hit uh, F to uh, put it into center. Now it seems that we need to zoom out a little bit so that we can fit it in. Again hit F so we perfectly fit. So it seems that it's a little bit small so maybe it's good to kind of a scale it uh, so that it, it it just fills the screen more. So what we do is just click alpha and then this uh, grab dock in here. And what we see that is that we got this and well, this is pretty much our alpha. So I'm gonna take another plane in here and I'm gonna convert it to polymesh 3D and I'm gonna divide it a couple of times so we get uh, some resolution here and now when we drag this we can see that we are getting this but but again we need to adjust our mid value because uh, it's uh, sort of a in this case it's white we can see that uh, the mid value should be uh, maybe 100 in this case so we can see we are getting this but it doesn't have enough depth so I'm gonna go and uh, increase the Z in this D so we are getting you know, more depth now so when you look at it from this angle, you can see that it's not really perfect because again, it just stores the height information. So it doesn't understand any detail what could be on this area. But well, again, if you are working for something that's gonna be baked into normal maps, again, this won't matter. And, and this would still give you pretty nice result what comes to ambient occlusion and so on. So again, really, really just, um, I think perfect way to create things like bullet holes and and I can't see why this wouldn't work just perfectly. So this was Jaakko, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to use alphas in ZBrush. I hope to see you soon. Bye bye.